Okay, if you haven't been looking around your yard, aphids are on the hunt everywhere, and so it's time to talk about one of my favorite topics, and that's using insects to fight insects. Okay, we are into the first weeks of June here in Rhode Island, and um, I have to say, I've never seen a year where we had so many aphids. Um, been looking around, I've seen euonymus and shrubs out in the landscape that are actually being deformed because the aphids are attacking them so hard. Uh, new roses, forget about it. They're all over the roses. If you're not sure what an aphid is, it's a really small, um, soft-bodied insect that can just mass produce. They just walk around eating and popping out babies the backside. So um, let me show you up close what one looks like. So these are aphids, uh, those little green soft body. You can actually even see the legs on there. The little white pieces on there are just their shells from when they um, grew from one life stage to another. And those little insects are many times on the bottom uh, of the plants, but when they get coverage and they get in bad enough numbers, they just keep mass producing and they just suck the life right out of your plants. So if you've had roses, you're very familiar with those uh, with aphids because you can go out there and the stems will just be riddled with them, thousands of them. And so typically our number one source to go after this is ladybugs, but there's a few different options. Let me show you what they look like. Okay, so ladybugs have finally come in, the cold weather is gone, and, um, but what we have in here, we have a small selection of these uh, ladybugs and uh, this lace wing combination. Now what it is, is you get, I don't know, a few hundred ladybugs inside here, and they just eat aphids aggressively in both life cycles. So you get these little ends, uh, ladybugs that'll fly around, eating them as it is, but then they start laying their eggs. And uh, I don't think they have a good picture on the back here of the lady. Oh, sorry about that, bugs. Um, I don't think they have a good picture in there, but that's that's a lace wing larvae. So what that is, you also get this little pack inside there. It's hard to see it, but there's a little container in there with some eggs in there. And those are lace wings. Now, lace wings do have the ability to fly around as they get bigger, and that's what an adult looks like, just really tiny. Um, but that little larvae in that picture they call them aphid uh, well, they, they nicknamed them aphid lions because each one of those can eat up to a thousand aphids a day and so um the key when using these ladybugs is go out in the evening hours and open them up and there's just going to be the, the beauty of the uh, nighttime is the fact that they don't want to fly in the evening so they don't want to fly in the evening. So you typically want to do is go around the yard, open them up, and just let them do their thing. So you can, if you have an aphid infestation in one location, you can just open this up. Like I'm just going to leave them here. Let them fly around the greenhouse and, and find their own food source. And they'll hunt down. But I have a captive audience. Uh, we have our middle of our displays, and uh, they're in the greenhouse, and there's only so far for them to go. So they're just gonna keep scouting and looking for insects. But in here, it's harder to see. You can see all those little tiny, tiny dots inside there. Those are the eggs of the lace wings. So if this was my garden and I had a whole rose patch or had a number of areas, I would just take this little lace wing pack and I would sprinkle them around any trouble areas I knew of. But if I didn't, I'd just walk up to my vegetable garden, walk up to perennial garden, open this up, I would go into the middle of the plants, I would open that up and just let everything hatch. And those plants, I mean, you can already see it. The little ladybugs are already starting to explore. They're gonna go find a little water source. They're gonna start scouting all over the place and they're just hungry. But that's it. They're just gonna fly around, do the things. Now, other insect controls aren't as mobile. So you have the nematodes still and uh, this is, we have the bigger packs in here for actually if you want to control grubs in your lawn, this one pack will do up to 2,000 square feet. But these are not as mobile. So you actually have to mix them up, apply them in different areas, and set them free. Um, but the ladybugs and lace wings are the most popular ones we have because who doesn't love lady ladybugs? Okay, so ladybugs will take care of the most, uh, uh, are the most fun. You're going to take care of those pesky aphids. But now, what about all the big insects? What about the bigger ones? Now it's time for my favorite one because they're the ninjas of the landscape. And that's the praying mantis. 
get a little egg sack, put it out there, and they're gonna hatch and go all over the place. So everybody loves finding prey mantis out inside the yard. Uh, and But there's, cause there's so few and far between. And you see this big prey mantis. It's amazing when your eye finally adjusts to them cause they blend in so well. But as far as the babies, I have other videos of these. We routinely will have a few left over later on that hatch. Um, but all it is, is you get this little egg sac and you go and just stick it inside one of your flowers or one of your shrubs, wherever you feel you might have trouble areas. I usually set them free in my vegetable gardens and um, it just sits there, does nothing. And then eventually this cracks open and between 100 and 200 little tiny baby praying mantis, and, uh, when they hatch, they're only like that big, uh, but they're fully formed. They look exactly like that and they're starving. So they, they just hatch and they come out and then they just start hunting and I find they go after the pesky earwigs they go after all sorts of critters. So they're a great one to set free in the landscape and just let them happen uh, on their own. But more than likely you'll miss the hatching. Uh, but sometimes what you can even do is just keep them uh, in this package until they hatch. And then just watch every day, making sure that once they hatch, um, you go and then release them. Because if you leave them inside this container too long after the hatching, like these ladybugs, Ladybugs don't cannibalize and go after each other, but primates are, they don't care. They eat anything that's small enough for them to consume. So if this is left closed for too long, and I mean like a day or so, they're going to start cannibalizing each other. All right, so hopefully you enjoy the hunt. They're fun. Get them while they last. Selection is always small because they're perishable. They don't like our refrigerators for very long, uh, but we have a couple batches coming in. And um, again, uh, the key is, I don't know if I mentioned it, is the ladybugs, the key to them is release them in the evening. They don't like to fly at night. They like the dampness of uh, the dew. And what we want is if you go outside in the yard, they can immediately just panic and just fly away. And they may fly to your neighbor's yard. You want them to stick around in your garden. So if you release them in the evening hours and sprinkle them around the plants, if you know you have problems, more likely they're gonna stick around the plants that you're trying to control the insects on long enough to find food. And if they find food, they're just gonna start eating and then they're gonna start laying their eggs and you're gonna get a succession of ladybugs out there. And so you get extended control. If you just walk out on a beautiful sunny day and open them up and set them free, your neighbors are gonna say thank you. Hope that helps, take care.